Hey guys, JH, welcome to practice tea. Very windy practice tea again today. Okay guys, just something I want to add to to channel lock and in, in the evolution of channel lock and as we what we're doing going forward. Something to try that will give you a real definite consistent thought process application in channel lock in the downswing and something that will really surprise you the results will surprise you now in the course of what we do in the back room when we take the golf club back here and we're taking it back here just try a couple of shots where you do this and I'm going to digress a little bit here, but there's no question in my mind, and Mo Norman agreed with me when we discussed Ben Hogan, there's no question in my mind that this is what Ben Hogan did in his golf swing. Why his downswing looked the way it did, why the, the lead wrist and the trail wrist were in that configuration, and why he hit the type of ball flight that he did. And that is that I believe that Hogan, on the downs, even on the backswing, he said he wanted to cup the wrist on the backswing. Now, in order to cup the wrist on the backswing, guys, you have to roll your forearms that way. As a, as a, you have to roll them clockwise. As a, as a right-handed player, you have to roll them like that to get that cup. Now, in rolling those forearms to the right for a right-handed person here, you're winding them up. Like, like an elastic band on the propeller on those little little toy planes where you wind it up with it and it's got the rubber band in there and then you wind it up and let it go. You wind it up this way and then it goes this way and off the plane goes. Now what we're doing here, if we take the golf club back and as we started back here, if we start to, to rotate those forearms, wind them this way and on the downswing wind them back even further which is very very much Martin Ayers's twirl effect very much that but what I want you to do as a matter of fact it's absolutely Martin Ayers's twirl effect because Martin knew that that's what Hogan did but guys we've never talked about it in channel lock and I and I gave guys some lessons on on um, on um, on wind and twirl in the last couple of days and, and what I was showing them to doing I was hitting the ball <laughs> unbelievably good and then when they left I just transposed it into channel lock and thought wow why wouldn't I do that in channel lock and I did and the ball flight was extraordinary the ball just went dead straight dead straight if I opened the face a little bit at address it just went dead straight with a little tail at the end a little, little fall off fade it was just amazing and the impact was incredible and I felt on the downswing guys that I was turning I was turning this lead hand so much towards the sky and this and this elbow back this way that's what I felt like that's what I do feel like I feel like this I feel if I've got a bucket of water here I'm tipping the water there there that's what I feel like I want to tip it there not just there I want to tip it here what do you got to do in the golf swing to get that feeling? You got to do this. As I take it back, I'm taking it here. And on the downswing, guys, I'm just rolling it. I'm rolling those forearms. I'm winding them this way. Trying to wind that, that wrist this way. It's called counter winding. Now the contact that I was getting by doing that, and the cons but, but channel lock's consistent anyway. But this was ridiculously consistent. It was, it was machine-like in terms of the ball flight and, and the lack of movement on the ball flight. Just basically no, no movement on the ball at all. And I'm, and, I, and I'm talking about, if I was going to do my 100 drives in a row between the two flags 40 yards apart or the two markers 40 yards apart, 
with a driver, I'm not going to hit probably 200 in there. Because I hit you know, about 40, 50 drives yesterday and they were just bowling alley stuff. They just don't, they just don't move at all. They just, they just don't move. They just, out there and they just peel off a little bit like that. So what is a JH? It's this. As we're taking it back here, we're rolling here and then on the downswing we're rolling. We're actually trying to bang the club into the ground like that guy. If you get that feeling here, in the downswing that you're doing that, you're rolling it here, you won't be able to do that because this is what I call the anatomical elasticity resultant. Because you're winding, because you're counter winding, because you're, you're winding so much clockwise in the backswing here, creating so much elastic rotational value there, that that elastic storage there, that potential energy, has to release itself. You would never be strong enough to take it here and bring the club in here and do that. Just wouldn't be able to do that. There's no question in my mind that that's what Hogan did. No question in my mind. I mean, I had that that theory, you know, when I first looked at Hogan 30 years ago. I had that theory, and I thought, yeah, I can see what he's doing there, but Mo Norman confirmed it for me. And he told, Paul Bertholdi told him, that that's exactly what Hogan did. Because Paul Bertholdi used to do that. Paul Bertholdi used to teach that. Mo Norman. First time I saw Mo Norman, when I met Mo Norman, he was standing over in a corner, and I hadn't met the guy. And he's standing there and he's doing this. Like this. Just no club, just that. Okay? And I said to the guys, natural guy, I said, what's he doing? He said, oh, he does that. He said, that, that gives him the feeling. He's trying to get that, that trail arm back there on that lead arm, a lead hand up there. That's what he wants to feel in the downswing. And that's what Mo Norman had in his golf swing. And that's why he's such an amazing striker, and that's why Hogan was such an amazing striker. And that's why Martin Ayres is such a great ball striker. So, so guys, it's this. Look, I'm dead cold, but I'm so confident, you watch this. A driver, we've got a really hard left to right wind here. What am I going to try and do? I'm going to try and hit the golf club with that part of the club. <laughs> See the back of it? That's my, my swing thought. As I come down, I'm going to try and hit it with that part of the back swing. I won't do that. I won't remotely do that. I couldn't do that physically, but my intention is to do that. Why? Because that's maximum. I'll need to maximally, you know, clockwise rotate those forearms and those hands that much on the backswing to get even more on the downswing. It's this way, this way, this way. It's one way. Martin Ayers, I'm stealing Martin's, and I'm sure he won't mind. Um, I am stealing his his terminology here. Martin says, you know, it's one way. The golf club goes one way in the golf swing. And the one way is this, as a feeling. Now, it won't look that pronounced in the golf swing here when you see it here. But I can assure you that's exactly what I feel. And after I gave that, uh, that, that twirl and wind uh, lesson to the guys, I was hitting the ball extraordinarily well with a conventional golf swing. And then when I went to Mo Norman after, Mo Norman, to Channel Lock after it, the ball flight was amazing. Now I haven't hit it since then, and I'm just going to hit a couple of shots here with the driver guys, dead cold. And someone was asking about the grip the other day, and I think it was Steve, Steve Walters or someone, and was saying that, that I'd said that I always take the grip in my, my lead hand before, I, and I do guys, and that's how I take my grip. Why do I take it like that? It's because it aligns my lead arm as it should be aligned just just perpendicular the shoulders nice and positioned correctly here and it just sets it up I don't have to to do any you know uh, muscular gymnastics with my hands to get my hands on the club it's already there you watch Adam Scott this is Adam Scott Adam Scott does this he does that he, you watch him he does that then he brings it across and puts the trail hand on and that's what I do so to just answer Steve Walters's uh, uh, query that's for you Steve
and yes Steve I will do a video on uh, an update video on channel lock bunker play I might do it today if I can get over there if the cows don't uh, the bulls not over there in the uh, the sand repository okay guys I'm just going to I'm going to try and hit the ball with the back of the golf club that's the feeling that's how much I'm going to 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 roll the face See that? I roll that face. I really roll that face. And then just a perfectly straight golf shot. Amazingly straight golf shot. And see I finished here because I was rolling this hand this way. Dead coal golf swing. What does it feel like? For anybody who's familiar with with golf swing shot terminology, it feels like a hold off. Ball just goes like a bullet. Absolute bullet. Guys, I can't hit a bit on that. See how that left knee's bent? If you get that feel about it, or that look about it, then you're doing it. You know you're not doing it if you get this finish. Because there's no way that you're doing it if you've got that finish. Absolutely no way. I'm warmed up after three shots. Ripping across here, probably 35 k's, but the ball's not moving. If you want to be anti-left, a way to swing a golf club. Let's tear it down a little bit. I think Jordan Spieth does that in his golf swing. That's why he gets that lead arm look like that. Plus he's pretty steep with his trail sold, huh? Trial shoulder goes down and that's why that arm comes up. But I'm sure that he also does that. He's a counterwinder. That's what it is, guys, is counterwinding. Okay, come on, Jase. If you want to play bowling alley golf with your driver, this is the way to go. You're never going to hit it anywhere but other than straight. So I'm getting this look about me because I'm counterwinding. So I am doing what I'm intentionally thinking about. I am doing that. All the same shot. All between two markers out there that are about 35 yards apart, but they're right in, they're only sort of tracking a 10 yard in the center. I'll aim this one at the left hand marker. Oh, don't hit it. <laughs> oh, don't hit it. Oh, it didn't. It only just missed it by about five yards. Different looking swing, isn't it, guys? Absolutely different looking swing. Try and do this. Trying to hit it with the back of the golf club. Or I'll really overdo this.
You should overdo it more often, Jase. Had a hit yesterday with the hazardous, that hazardous, that Project X hazardous yellow shaft, the handcrafted one. We had a 2 or X one here. Stiffer shaft I've ever hit in my life. It was perfect for this. You just hit perfect uh, little slider shots. And of course that, that shaft really stops the toe coming in anyway because that's the way it is. Okay, last one. Don't get any better than that. Wow, it does not get any better than that. Guys, it's this. Pinky up. But it's pinky up. It's pinky up very early in the downswing. Like, like here. That's where I feel it's so pinky up, so early. Pinky, little pinky finger, pinky up. And it'll help you pulling with the lead arm, guys, because as soon as you think pinky up, the lead arm is active. All right, hit the last shot. See if you can bomb this one, J.H. Come on. Just call me bomber. Call me bomber. Yeah. Yeah, call me bomber. Yeah, bomber. <laughs> Mr. X bombs his three iron as far as that driver. Yeah, I don't hit it long, guys, but I'm trying to hit it long. Well, I'd love to hit it long. 76, you're not going to hit it long. Okay, we'll hit this one long. See those bent legs, guys, with the driver? That's what you got to do. I'll hit a couple of shots with those those bent legs accentuated. Pinky up. How about that? Just an incredibly confidence inspiring golf swing. I mean, I could go to any golf course, you know, and 18th hole and have everything on the line and water all down the left or out of bounds. I couldn't go there. I could just employ this. I couldn't go there. I could not hit a bad shot. Or one that would go left and get me into trouble. Can't do it with this golf swing. Wow, I love it. I love it, guys. Absolutely love it. Well, let's, let's, let's bomb one. Talk about bombing, let's bomb it. There's a bomber. Look at the bent legs, guys. Look at this. It just doesn't move. I mean, the ball just does not move. Okay, guys, that's, that's, that's just something that you might be able to try. If you've got a little bit of indifference with the shots, and if you are coming over the ball a bit, you can't come over it if you do that. Because if you do that, in the downswing, keeps the shoulder closed. That's the knock-on effect. That keeps the shoulder closed. Just hit a couple of iron shots. Take it back here. Get that face wide open and just try and bring it through like that. That feels like that. Take it up here, back load it here. Try and hit it, try and hit the ground, the back of the golf club guys. Here. Try and do that. You'll be amazed. You'll think that, wow, the face is going to be so open that I'm going to hit it off the planet if you're right hander out to the right. But I promise you, you can't stay open that much. The more you open it, the more it wants to close. Hogan found that secret out. I think Henry Pickard told him. Although a lot of people 
that I've spoken subsequent to in the last few years said that Count Yogi showed him that. Yogi showed him how to do that. Yogi said, if you don't want to hook it, just do this. Here. That's what I heard. Can't confirm that. Okay, guys, have a look at that, and uh, if I can get over there in the bunker, with if, if the uh, bulls are not there, I'll try and do that uh, that bunker video, an update bunker video.